Hello and welcome to another Mr. Carter Science Special. In this video we're going to continue looking at the non-communicable diseases and specifically we're going to look at the links between diet, exercise and those diseases. Let's begin by looking at an image of a very unhealthy diet. We've got chips, we've got fried chicken, donuts, and it looks like some kind of burger down there. What kind of diseases could a diet high in these um, foods lead to? Well, let's consider a balanced diet first. And you can see what a balanced diet would be by looking at this eat well plate. Eating a balanced diet means eating all the right foods and nutrients in the correct amount. Approximately a third of your diet should be fruit and vegetables. A third should be breads, rices, potatoes, pastas containing carbohydrates. And the final third should be made up mainly of milks and uh, dairy, meat, fish, eggs, beans containing your proteins. A very small amount of your diet should be made up of food and drinks high in fat and sugar. If you eat more food, containing energy than your body uses each day, then that excess energy in your food will be stored as fat in your body. That fat or cholesterol is needed by your body, but only in very small amounts. The fat will cushion your organs, the fat will actually help you to store some vitamins, and fat itself is a store of energy. And fat is also an insulator. It will help to keep you warm and help to maintain the constant temperature inside your body of 37 degrees. However, eating too much fat can lead you to becoming overweight and lead you to become obese. Now, malnutrition, many people think, is not eating enough of a particular um, nutrient. However, malnutrition can also be defined as eating too much of a particular nutrient. So a diet high in sugars and fats will cause a large amount of fat to be stored underneath the skin subcutaneously. And you can see that by comparing this person here who has a healthy weight to this person here who is obese. And you can see the amount of fat that they're storing around their hips and in their upper body around the abdomen and organs. That fat which is stored under the skin will increase the risk of cardiovascular diseases, heart disease, high blood pressure, heart attacks and even type 2 diabetes. Now to find out if you are obese, you need to be able to calculate your BMI, your body mass index. But before we calculate our body mass index, we also need to consider the effect of exercise on our health. Glucose and fatty acids, which are present in your diet um, can be used in respiration by muscle cells and exercise increases muscle mass so bigger muscles will respire more using up more glucose and those fatty acids which have been produced by uh, digesting the fats so there'll be less glucose and fatty acids available to be stored as fat in your body and this will help to reduce or maintain your body uh, body mass and as a result, people who exercise, they have fitter hearts, bigger lungs than people who do not exercise. And there's a variety of different types of exercise, running, working out in the gym, walking to school, walking upstairs instead of taking a lift, doing physically active jobs. These will all help you to exercise and reduce the amount of fat stored by your body. So your BMI, your body mass index, can be calculated using this formula. And that's a formula you need to memorize. BMI equals your weight divided by your height squared. In effect, that is your height times your height. So let's look at an example of how to calculate BMI. And in this example, we're going to calculate the BMI of a man who is 180 centimetres tall and 80 kilograms in mass. So with all calculations in science, you need to begin by writing down and stating the word equation. Following on from that, you substitute in the numbers. So the weight is 80 kilograms and the height is 180 centimetres squared. We then need to convert these centimetres into metres. So we would write it again, 80 kilograms divided by 1.8 metres squared. 
and then we do the maths and remember 1.8 meters squared is equal to 1.8 times 1.8 so we end up with 80 kilograms divided by 3.24 meters squared we now do the final piece of maths 80 kilograms divided by 3.24 meters squared which gives us a BMI of 24.69 now, if we check on the BMI charts here, you can see that that person will have a healthy weight, although they are at the top end of that and need to be careful they don't put on extra mass, which would end up pushing them into the overweight category. So we can use the BMI to begin to look at links between your body mass index, the amount of fat in your body and other factors and diseases. For example, in this graph, we have the BMIs on the bottom here and we're um, linking those together to see if there is a correlation between BMI and the percentage of people with cardiovascular disease. And you can see that as the BMI is increasing along the bottom here, the percentage of people with cardiovascular disease is also increasing and there is a positive correlation. But correlation does not necessarily mean causation unless there is a causal link. And we can look at another graph there to try and see, again, is there a correlation, in this case, between the level of activity, the amount of exercise you do, and the relative risk of death from cardiovascular disorder. And again, you can see that there is a negative correlation. As the level of activity increases, the risk of death from cardiovascular disorder decreases, cardiovascular disorder being heart diseases. But just because we do have a correlation, do we also have a causal mechanism? Well, that could well be an exam question. Could you answer and describe the causal mechanism that links these two factors? And yes, there is a causal mechanism. Exercise increases your muscle mass and this increases your metabolic rate. The more fat and glucose is used up in respiration. You're therefore less likely to be overweight and therefore the risk of developing arthritis and diabetes is also reduced. There will also be less fat and cholesterol in the coronary arteries, which supply the heart muscle, and therefore the risk of developing high blood pressure and heart, and heart disease is also reduced. So we have a clear causal mechanism linking and explaining our negative correlation that we see in this graph. Let's have a look at a different set of graphs here. In this case, we have the BMI index on the x-axis, and we have the percentage of people with type 2 diabetes on the y-axis. And we have that for both men and for women. Is there a correlation between your BMI and the percentage of people who develop type 2 diabetes? And if there is a correlation, is there a causal mechanism? Well, yes, there is a positive correlation. As your BMI increases, the percentage of people who develop type 2 diabetes also increases and this is true in both men and in women but is there a causal mechanism well people who have a higher bmi are overweight and obese and will have more fat and cholesterol stored in their arteries and in and around their major organs including the pancreas and the liver this can prevent the pancreas from releasing enough insulin and it can also lead to insulin resistance in liver cells. The liver cells will no longer be able to store excess glucose as glycogen and that is the definition of type 2 diabetes. So yes we have a positive correlation between your BMI and type 2 diabetes and yes we have a causal mechanism that explains that, that link. I hope you've enjoyed watching this short video on diet, exercise, disease, non-communicable diseases. If you have, comment below, let me know what you've learnt and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you very much for your time.